If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. And I am so fired up for today's episode. I've been waiting for this one. We've got Dr. Chow at Pro Football Doc on Twitter from sickscore.com, S-I-C-S-C-O-R-E.com. We always have Steve Fezzik at Fezzik Sports. I'm Ross Tucker at Ross Tucker NFL. And Steve, every week you just drop knowledge. You give me information. You help me and all the listeners and viewers at youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. They love you. Uh, today's payback. Today is the day that I provide value to you. My value is Dr. Chow. My value is sixscore.com. I am so excited about this. Dr. Chow, so I think most people know he's been on the Ross Tucker football podcast before and other shows, but Dr. Chow was the team orthopedic surgeon for the Chargers, what, 20 years, Doc? Uh, yeah, make me old. <laughs> For, for 20 years, and now I think most of you know on social media, he is invaluable. Any injury, football, basketball, baseball, it feels like within five minutes, just by looking at the video, I'm going to say he has like a 95 to 98% rate of being correct, which is amazing. So I guess before we even talk to Dr. Chow, Steve, talk about just that. Talk about the value, whether it's in-game betting or getting in the early lines before the next week, of Dr. Chow, people that follow him on social media or people that get the six score at sixscore.com for each player. Talk about the value of knowing that before other people as it relates to the betting lines. Yeah, so pulling back the curtain – a lot of pro betters, including myself, for every team, we've got the value of the backup quarterback versus the quarterback. And obviously that can be a minimal difference. It can be as high as nine points if Aaron Rodgers is out, uh, where Dr. Chow really adds values twofold. One, is dude going to play? All right. What's the probability he's going to play? And then two, if he plays with the injury, we are trained as pro football betters to be very binary. It's a zero or a one. Okay, Mayfield's going to be able to play, so we're going to upgrade the quarterback this much. But wait a minute. Is he going to be able to play effectively? Is this an injury where, like a concussion, if a guy can play, he's usually at 100%. But there's other injuries where Dr. Chow could be invaluable saying, you know what, even if he goes out there, uh, this is going to be a problem on the field, right? And Dr. Chow, that's, that's basically what the six score is, right? I just got into this recently. I mean, I knew about Dr. Chow last couple of years with the injury info, but the six score, you basically give every guy a grade. I'll just let you explain it. Well, yeah, the whole point of the six score is that, uh, look, of course, everyone's listed as questionable. Will they play? Won't they play? But if they do play, how effective will they be? Let's just take the most recent Super Bowl. We didn't think that either tight end would play if it was a regular season game. And of course, Tyler Higby didn't play, so not that big of a deal. But C.J. Uzama was going to play, and we had a low six score on him because we felt he really wasn't going to be that effective. And he was, what, two catches, 16 yards uh, with that MCL. So it gives you an idea – uh, individually, offense, defense, run offense, run defense, matchups. So you can use it, Steve. I'm sure you can use it in a lot of different ways for totals, you know, prop bets, uh, obviously in game stuff, but also early lines. Like, for example, towards the end of the season, we were saying for quite a while that, uh, uh, that, uh, uh in Baltimore, uh, they, the quarterback wasn't gonna play, but John Harbaugh was still always optimistic every week. We think he's going to play. We think he does. he's going to play. And obviously when he doesn't play, the line moves quite a bit. And we uh, sort of fair coach speak out by looking at injury mechanisms. And, uh, you know, for four weeks there, you could have gotten an advantage on knowing Lamar Jackson. 
at the end of well, that season. Yeah, and Steve, if you remember Super Bowl week when we were talking props, I was all over the under on anything for Uzama. Number one, because I was on the sideline of the AFC Championship game, and I saw that was not a good injury. I, I could tell he was in a lot of pain and struggling. But secondly, I saw where Dr. Chow said, look, this is a regular season game. He's not playing. I don't think that the books do a great job of taking into account injuries with the prop. Because I think most of it, Steve, correct me if I'm wrong, is just taking an average of their last however many games. It's all just math, right? The math does not include Dr. Chow's injury score. Yeah, spot on. So if we're talking about is Tyler Higby going to play in terms of the spread, who really cares? He's worth half a point. It's de minimis. But when you go to prop betting and the like, it's enormous. And Ross, you nailed it. How politically correct have you become? The books do not do a great job at something. You know what that's um, translated? They have no idea what they're doing. And we can make a lot of money by taking advantage of them pricing tight ends that are playing on one leg that are getting their numbers based upon their season long averages. Absolutely. All right. So Dr. Chow, walk us through it. When the information gets posted, because I know what Steve's going to say. Steve's going to say it's most valuable right after you tweet it or immediately when you post the six score for a team. So you have six score for each player, but then you have it for the whole side of the ball and the whole team. So take us through the actual scoring, how it works, and typically when you guys post it, during the NFL season? Because I know you're doing NBA right now and you'll be doing baseball soon, but we are mainly an NFL show. Yeah, and, and we're doing lots of NFL things right now, you know, even funny or silly little things like evaluating Kenny Pickett's hand size and how it's just not feasible that it grew an eighth of an inch between the uh, combine <laughs> and the front day, right? I mean, it's just measurement error. And we're not that worried about Kenny Pickett and his hand size because his thumb doesn't extend all the way. And the way you measure hand size is tip of the thumb, the tip of the finger. So if your thumb doesn't extend, it measures smaller, but it's not really in fact smaller because you grip a football with your hand and your thumb clenched and, and clasped. But what NFL guys want to see is ball security because he had some fumble issues and also how he throws the NFL ball, which you know, Ross, is a little bit bigger than the college football. And that's what they want to see. So year round, it's NFL stuff. And even right now, we're saying, look, you, you've talked about it, I'm sure, a bunch. All the quarterback movement, merry-go-round, Deshaun Watson downstream, Marcus Mariota here, the, the, uh, the trades and, and the signings and Russell Wilson and everything. But the one guy left sitting on the sidelines still is Jimmy G, because we've been saying for a long time that shoulder injury is a bigger deal. And right now, he's untradeable until he proves his shoulder is okay coming off that surgery. So what we do is I try and deal in, Steve, what I call insider knowledge, not insider information. I don't call team doctors or trainers or GMs or agents and get sources. My only sources are from my time in the NFL, knowing how injuries look and what they are and having studied video of injuries of my own team. And I do what I would call qualitative analysis on every injury. There's no question when, you know, CJ Uza, Uzama said to have an MCL, there are algorithms that say, well, this typically is X weeks to X weeks. I don't go by typically. I go by the situation, the type of player they are. And in the Bengals, Uzama's case, their backup, Drew Sample, was mostly a blocker. Uzama is the pass catcher that Joe Burrow needed. And he's been with the Bengals through some low times. And here comes new head coach right? Young guy. How is he going to tell that veteran in the locker room? It's the biggest game of your life. You're 70%, but you're going to sit. That would not go well to Uzama and the rest of the locker room. Meanwhile, uh, Sean McVay is established. Tyler Higby is a good player. He's played in the Super Bowl. And Sean McVay can say, Tyler, uh, I love you. You played in the Super Bowl, but I think uh, we have people that can help this team more to help you get this ring. But that's a hard thing for to happen in Cincinnati. So we try and use the my time in the NFL and looking at all situations. 
from Coach Speak, Hiding Behind Health, and doing a qualitative evaluation. So I call it micro analytics for this week, what might happen, not macro analytics for this season, what should happen if a player was healthy. Okay, so here's something really important for both of you guys. Dr. Chow, we typically clean up on the NFL draft. Steve destroys the NFL draft. What's really valuable is knowing the real information about the injuries for these college kids because when DraftKings, everybody else, starts to post their over-under, you know, be drafted, here's the over-under, if you can say, well, this kid's got this injury, this guy's got this, this would be a concern. I mean, the Michigan kid just tore his Achilles. That would be really valuable for us. I noticed over at sixscore.com, you already have a lot of college updates and information. I'm looking at Jeremy Ruckert, um, the injury there, Jalen Weidermeyer, the tight end from AM. You already have a decent amount of this information. Here's what we need to do, Dr. Chow. Take it down. Take it off the site. <laughs> Don't post it anywhere until they come out with their – Steve, am I right? I mean, we want this information as soon as they come out with their over-unders. <laughs> then you come back on the show and you're like, oh, this guy's got this, this guy's got that. How valuable would that be, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about the – in the past Super Bowl – length of the national anthem so this has been a cash cow for years that everyone they do the rehearsals we've got some people or we know people who know people that are taping how long the rehearsal of the length of the anthem is well the problem is this year the books were a little slow to put this up with good reason and the reports came out how long the anthem was going to be one minute 51 seconds and not enough books had it up and they all pulled it off immediately so no one could benefit from the insider information if you will because of that so there's a sweet spot you want one book to post it a whole lot of other books to copy it and then the relevant information to come down so you can benefit from it well look this is why i love chatting with you guys we're an information site i'm not a gambling tout you guys can tell me what to do with it but I'll make you this promise. We are collating some of the draft information for the NFL draft props. We are holding back at least one big piece of news that we already know, waiting for that to come. And, Ross, if you want or Steve, I'll give it to you first on your show as we put it up on our site, uh, and, uh, and uh, we'll see what that happens with it. But, yeah, the draft props aren't up yet. But I know of one – significant player that is their draft position will change okay so i'm glad you said that this is the last question i have for you we all know the week of the draft information comes out about guys this guy's got a terrible arthritic knee this guy's got that this guy's got that and i'm assuming a lot of times dr chow is that a team that's hoping the guy drops to him or because how why else would they let would anybody let it's not his agent it's not him it's not the kid or maybe it's just a team that doesn't care and they're trying to throw somebody a bone with some information my question is do these teams talk at all why is that information come out then and i guess sort of how much of this stuff do you already know because you're kind of in the loop or do you not know it because you're not able to actually physically examine these kids at the combine well, I make a big point because I'm a practicing orthopedic surgeon that HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A, is very important to me. If I know for a fact, then I will not report it. If I know it from my analysis, I'm going to say it. For example, David Ojabo, the Michigan guy, where there wasn't even any video. But in talking to guys that were there, their description of what happened in the passing drill led us to report at Sports Injury Central that that's going to be an Achilles. And that was confirmed. But that was insider knowledge, not insider information. If David Ojabo's agent called me or the team position from Michigan called me and shared an MRI or, or whatever, I wouldn't be able to say a word. So I only deal in insider knowledge, not insider information. Big difference, right? Insider knowledge can make you some money in the stock market. Insider information will land you in jail with the SEC. And for, for us, for medical, HIPAA is very important. So I will never violate that. But you can glean a lot of information. 
look, and I don't work on leaks. I don't work on what a coach says, a player says, agent says, or a reporter says. I, I respect all the national reporters, big time guys. A lot of them I talk to. And sometimes they're just being, they're always accurate. Sometimes they're being fed inaccurate information for some secondary game. And I just try and have a clean analysis of it. Never perfect, but we did do a study over three years where we were 95% accurate. He is going to be on again, I think, before the draft. Definitely again before the season because I want to dive in, though, a little bit deeper, the actual six score ratings. What were you like uh, just just purely based on six score, just purely based on injury information, nothing else? Didn't you hit more than 60% of your uh, of your of the advice you gave out at sixscore.com in terms of bets? Yeah, and we're pretty hot in NBA right now, even more so because there's fewer players in the NBA. But in the NFL, when there was a more than 10.6 score difference, we were about 60% uh, during the season, just blindly going off of that. And there's a lot more factors that go into it, Steve, and, and for your audience. I'm not suggesting just blindly follow the six score. I'm saying it's one factor in your decision making. If you like team A and they happen to be healthier on six score, you might put two units on it, three units on it. If you like team A and they're the least healthy team compared to team B, maybe you want to temper your expectations and do half a unit or do something different. It's just one factor in the decision making. It's not the be all end all. So here's what everybody needs to do. Check him out on social media at ProFootballDoc. Go to SickScore.com. You can actually sign up and get an email newsletter. So then you can actually get alert to notifications, which is probably the most valuable thing of the whole thing. If you get alerts to notifications for an in-game bet when a guy gets hurt, when Dr. Chow knows the injury, knows the guy's not coming back, Steve can tell you. We'll dive into it, the value of that. In fact, Steve, I want to talk to you about this a little bit more. Dr. Chow, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate right, it. Uh, so, Steve, I'm telling you. So, I've known about Dr. Chow and him posting on Twitter for a while. I didn't know about this six score thing until recently. I don't think, you know, I want you to talk about this. I'm not saying it's like uh, we found the Holy Grail and, and, and we're all going to get rich now. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is, I feel like what are we always trying to do, right? Like any little edge in information that maybe we have that the books don't or other people betting don't have. I guess I feel like, I don't know, how much do you think the books are reading Dr. Chow's sixscore.com to know which team has a health advantage or not? Zero of them. I Maybe one of them out there. The whole idea that the odds makers knows more than the betters is just a complete and utter myth. Um, and I go back to, as evidence, the WNBA All-Star game that one book posted 250 for their total and everyone copied it and it closed 190. It was off by 60 points. Like <laughs> no one had done any research. It's just like, oh, well, yeah, we're, we're busy. You know, they, they this other group's pretty good. We'll just go with their number. Um, and not... Think about it in terms of <clears throat> your cost benefit analysis. Does it really benefit you to hire a whole bunch of people to do all of this? No. So absolutely, there's money to be made. Not so much from betting on the team against a team that has a player injured. Yes, that could be good. Just bet against that player. Play points, rebounds, assists under. Uh, it's the prop betting where the biggest edges are. By the way, Steve, um, right now, for a limited time, you can get a game day assortment package from Omaha Steaks. It's been a while since I've gotten a chance to tell everybody about Omaha Steaks. Visit omahasteaks.com, enter even into the search bar, and order the Omaha Steaks sampler today. You'll save over 50%, plus you'll get 12 Omaha Steaks burgers free with your order love it we got the final four this weekend if you want to hit that up they also by the way have this game day assortment package which is absolutely incredible the omaha sampler is four fillets four pork chops 
four chicken breasts, four jumbo franks, four more jumbo franks, a package of meatballs, four caramel apple tartlets, seasoning, and then the free 12 burgers. But the game day assortment, two packages of fully cooked wings, six Philly cheesesteak sirloin, a Red Hook ale beer battered shrimp, 12 gourmet franks in a blanket. Gourmet, I love it. Gourmet jumbo flanks, sweet potato fries, mini chocolate mousse. This is killing me. It's right before lunchtime. Eight Omaha Steaks burger. I mean, it is absolutely unbelievable. All you need to do is go to omahasteaks.com and search the keyword even. Obviously, it's the Even Money Podcast. OmahaSteaks.com, keyword even, delicious. Um, So, Steve, I want to have him on again, maybe right before the draft and definitely before the season starts because he's, you know, they give us, he gives a score to both teams' health. And there were games where the one team has like 10 points health better. And if you just always took that team, the team with 10 points health better, he hit over 60%. Very strong. And I know we've got all these injury lists, but the problem is everyone's listed as, you know, um, questionable and how significant is the injuries and the like. And this really helps quantify it. And I've always been a big believer, do one thing really, really well, instead of a lot of things kind of okay. If you just focused on the, you know, like you said, very injured teams playing teams that are healthy, I think you'll do very well in your betting. Really looking forward to having him on again. Six score. It's SIC. It's Sports Injury Central, Central, but sixscore.com. Let's get to an email or two, Steve. It's been a little while. Ever wanted to ask a professional sports better a question? It's time to Ask Steve. I love that. That gets me excited. All right. Morning, Ross. Had a math question for you and Steve. That means it's for Steve, by the way. For the Even Money, Even Money podcast, I listen to the show religiously. By now, most coaches understand the idea to go for too late when cutting a 14-point lead to an 8-point lead. Similarly, should a team with a 1-point lead that scores a late touchdown go for 2 to make it a nine-point lead? Failure, if you don't get it, you still have a seven-point lead. But a nine-point lead is a two-possession game. Doesn't that outweigh the odds of trading 50-50 two-point conversions? Very interesting. This is from Rick. Would love yours and Fezzik's take on this. Thanks. All right. I First off, I know the conclusion because the analytics people have told me you're supposed to go for two, actually. All right. Let me attempt to do the math here. Let's make an easy assumptions. Um, I'm ahead. No, I'm behind. You're, you're scoring, Ross. You're up one. You're, you're scoring two against me. We're equal teams. And we have to assume I'm going to score a touchdown back. And that's going to be the only other score the rest of the game. It's very late in the game. So 50% of the time, if you go for two, 50% of the time you get it, you win. 50% of the time you miss it. You're only up seven. I'm going to score. We're going to overtime. You're going to win 75% of the time. Now, let's say you just kick your extra point. All right. At that point, you're up eight. I'm going to get my touchdown. 50% of the time, I'm going to get my two-point conversion. I'll go for, and 50% of the time, I'll win in overtime. You win 75% as well. So the pure back of the envelope math says it doesn't matter. Either way, you have a 75% chance of winning given you get that touchdown and then I get mine. So my math says it it doesn't matter, but I know the analytics people actually say it's correct to go for two. I'm not sure why. So hold on a second. You go for two, you're up nine. It's two possessions. If you go for two and, and, and you get it, if you go for two and you don't get it, you're up seven. And yeah, I mean, they could go for two and the win and they'd have a 50% chance of that. But the odds are they're probably going to kick the extra point and go to overtime, right? Yeah, but either way, you're going to win 75% of the time. If you're if you're up 
by seven half the time and by nine half the time you're going to win put it together you're going to win all the time if you're up nine you're going to win half the time if you're up seven if you're up eight you're going to win 75 percent of the time so i, I come up with 75 percent that you're going to win given i get my touchdown interesting okay i got another question this one is from brian in germany which i think is interesting he said during the season it feels like they call penalties all the time offensive holding you know illegal contact in the receiver defensive holding in the playoffs and Super Bowl, it's different. Does this affect your betting strategy with regard to more or less points being scored? What about prop bets? It's well known, Steve. They call less penalties in the playoffs. Yeah, too well known because a typical regular season, the over-under on penalties called around 13. In the Super Bowl, prop bet, on the, I saw penalties 10. So the odds makers and the marketplace is well aware of fewer penalties being called in the Super Bowl. I think it evens out, Ross. You um, some of the receivers get mugged some of the time, but the those those dastardly offensive linemen just grabbing a little more jersey, no doubt about that. So I think that roughly it all offsets. I love that you said the word dastardly because that's what you also say about the bookies and their vig dastardly, which is hilarious to me. Here's what everybody needs to do. Make sure you check out Steve on social media at Fezzik Sports. We got the NFL draft coming here before you know it. It is going to be April starting next week. We're going to start to dive into as the books start to post these bets. We will be all over it. Really looking forward to it. Certainly you can check out Steve at Fezzik Sports. He's tweeting more. I've noticed that. Steve's tweeting more. A lot of overrated, underrated, which I like. At Pro Football Doc, by the way, is how you follow Dr. Chow. SICscore.com. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. Remember, you can watch this show on YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Or even just go ahead and... You can just see the highlights of other shows in the Ross Tucker Podcast Network. I think we're done here. Good luck, everybody. Hope you guys get some money. Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft, all available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 